So this is a quick little video on the stepper motors that come on your, uh, your dash panel here, your instrument cluster. Uh, in my case, my uh, the resistors here for the Prindle were also out, so I soldered those back in with the rework station. Makes it a lot easier than using a soldering iron. Um, anyway, so the stepper motors are, you know, these. I'm gonna skip, you know, all the disassembly and stuff. There's plenty of other videos on YouTube, and I assume if you're at this point, then you probably already know what you're doing. Um, and if you don't, then this video probably isn't uh, isn't the best starting point. Um, but so once you have your uh, motor, your stator, sorry, your uh, stepper motor out, uh, you're gonna want to disassemble it. And I only have one hand, so I'm gonna jump cut here. So if you don't have one, you should really get one of these uh, spudger tools. They're absolutely amazing for uh, getting into things like this, uh, especially phones and other gadgets. Uh, anyway, so this is what the inside of the stator looks, or the stepper motor looks like. Uh, I keep saying stator because I'm thinking of, uh, you know, the magnets and how this is kind of a weird motor. I've never seen something like it, like it before. Um, but anyway, so it's, it's a few main components. You have that one, uh, which actually drives, that's what connects to the uh, needle. Um, you have this guy, oh, I grabbed it by the gear teeth. That's probably not a good idea. Um, and then you have the uh, like commutator, is that what this is? So this is a brushless motor, and it is absolutely the tiniest brushless motor I've ever seen in my life. Uh, it's not easy to do, and it's even harder while holding a camera. Uh, so this is the actual commutator for the stepper motor. I'm not sure if that's what it's called in a stepper motor. Uh, uh, that's what it would be if it was a brushless motor. Um, but you can see those little magnets on there. And I've already fixed this one, kind of, but you can still see the issue. Um, if you'll notice, damn it. Uh, even breathing makes it jump around, it's so tiny. Um, if you'll notice the bar on the bottom, so that would be the one on the inside of the tweezers, from what you're seeing, uh, the thicker part, is not perfectly straight. And that's what causes it to jump around and uh, make all kinds of noise and it's usually what causes the failure of the motor. So now that I see it through the camera, I realize it's not nearly as straight as I thought I had made it. So I'm gonna jump cut, straighten that out, and get back to it. So I believe I've made that a little bit straighter. Um, if you'd focus. Uh, so that should induce a little bit less of the oscillations that, that you're hearing. Oh my God, it's not on the floor, thank Christ. Um, we're gonna grab that, we're gonna drop it back in there. Uh, I think I can, I think I can do this with the camera. Yeah, I'm, I'm an expert. I am in no way an expert. Uh, but, you know, sometimes I figure it out. All right, so that's back in. Uh, I'll make sure these are in there all the way. Uh, I disassembled it all the way to see, you know, what else I could see in there. You want to make sure you get all the solder off those pins if you're thinking of doing that. Um, but there's really nothing under there. I'm not actually even sure how this works. Somehow the magnetic flux goes through this and turns the motor from these electromagnets over here. I'm not sure. I, I would love to research something like this. But uh, let me just drop this gear back in. And this gear. And then I will jump cut to snap this back on. And these are the little tabs that you want to pull off with your spudger. Makes this so easy. But um, it's going to be hard to point it out with the contrast, but uh, this little detent right here is what stops it on the ends. So you want to make sure that that is in a place where it can fit into this channel. I mean, that's kind of kind of hard to mess up. You'd have to be like 10%. you got 90% chance to get it in there, right? Anyway. I wish I had gotten a video of the sound it was making before, but it was pretty gnarly. Uh, so I'm just going to snap the needle back on there and I don't know if you can hear that, but it is wonderfully smooth operation. It feels like there might be a tooth that's slightly out of alignment, but it may have just fixed itself. I felt it go over a little bump right there. And that is a lot better than it was. So I'm going to stick that into its minimum position take that off, uh, solder it back in, 
and so now I have it soldered back in. Um, I haven't tested it yet, but I won't upload this video if it didn't work. So, I mean, if you're watching this video, you know that it did work and it, you know, functioned better than it did at least. Um, this is a uh, kind of a useless video actually because you can get all six of these for less than $10 if you look in the right places on eBay. Um, but you know, if you're, if you don't feel like ordering them, if you like waiting, I already ordered them. So if this doesn't work, uh, I'll figure it out. But you know, for the most part, you should just buy it. But if you did want to know for whatever reason, how to fix those. And there you go.